Welcome guys. So I'm talking about this uh Bizio Bizot identity. Okay, so uh I'm I'm a little bit different from others peop uh from other people in YouTube. So usually people are talking about is that they will uh tell you the uh examples but uh but in my channel I seldom do examples. Okay, so in this channel I, I, I want to uh, give a detailed proof of this identity. Okay. So the idea is that A B integer of the greatest comma divisor, then there exists a D is a comma divisor of A, a greatest comma divisor. So you tell you that uh, D is a divisor of A, D is a divisor of B, and I say that oh there is an X and Y such as X plus B Y equals to D. Okay, so this is the first K uh this is the identity. Okay, so theory is that uh, exist. Uh, X Y exist. Okay, so the proof. Okay, so the proof idea is that uh, we first construct, we first construct uh, D, and then we say that D is the greatest comma divisor. Okay, so proof let's take S as a set, let's say X plus B Y, such that uh, uh, X Y are integer and the uh, X B Y greater than zero. So I collect all the integer, and uh, I collect all the integer, and I say that uh, to make this S greater or equal to zero. Okay, so the first observation is that S is non-empty, and the reason is that uh, uh, the reason is that uh, if A is positive, then I can take S equals to one, Y is zero. So we have A belongs to S. If S is negative, that if A is negative, I can take X equals to X equals to minus one, Y equals zero. So it, it means minus A belongs to S. So S is always non-empty, and the S is a subset of the uh, positive integer, right? So, by the well ordering principle, so there exists a minimum element in S. So this is all. This is actually this sentence is the order proof idea. So I I call them minimum D, right? So that means that means there exists x and y such that. Uh, Ax plus by equals to d, and I call d is a mean, uh, uh, d is a minimum. Okay, so the rest, the rest is what? Proof. The rest is just proof d is greatest comma divisor of ab, right? So, if, so if we prove d is greatest comma divisor than ab, then by this construction, we know that there exists the x and y. Then we prove this fact. Okay, so, uh, how do we prove d is the greatest comma divisor of ab? Okay, so. In order to prove D is the greatest comma divisor of AB, we need to prove, uh, prove what? Prove the first thing is that D is a divisor of A and B, and the second is that we prove that uh, if C is a divisor of A and C is a divisor of B, then C will less than less or equal to D. So D will be the greatest comma divisor, right? By definition. Okay, so let's prove the first things. Uh. So first thing is also uh, by the U. So we know that uh, uh, we know that there is a Euclidean division. Let's divide a by d, right? So I can write a plus d q plus r, and the r is less than d, right? This is the so there is it, this is the q, which is an integer, okay? And from this we have r equals a minus d q and uh, a minus q, a x plus b y, okay? And uh, right, because we know that uh, d is a x plus b y, so we have a one minus q x minus b q y, right? By definition, so we so we see that uh, r is what r belongs to s, right? Because by definition, r now is the combination of a integer combination of a and b, right? But uh, but we say that uh, d is a minimum, right? So the only possibility is that uh, okay, so uh, sorry, so I should not say. Uh, uh, R belongs to S, so I should say, if R larger than zero, then R belongs to S, right? But this will contradict that uh, D is a minimum, right? So the only possible, the po only possibility is, is that R equals to zero. So it tells you that uh, if when R equals zero, right? It tells you that uh, D A equals to D Q, so D is a divisor of A, right? 
And uh, by symmetry, if D is the divisor of A, then D is uh, also a divisor of B. Okay, so this is the proof of the first part. Okay, so let's go to the final second part. So the second part is trivial. So let's say A is a, uh, C is a divisor of A, so that means A can write an S C S. And B is a divisor, uh, D C is also divisor of uh, B, so B can write an B, B written as C T. So D is just, uh, let's say, A X, right? So C X X plus C T Y. So C X X plus T Y, right? So it means that C is a divisor of D. So C will less or equal to D. So by these two, we prove that uh, D is a G C D. So we prove the fact what we want. Okay, so we prove this beautiful theorem. So this theorem is, I think it's very beautiful in the number theory. Okay, but the actual there has a very consequence. Okay, so there's, let me just make uh, some final remark. So the remark is that actually, uh, if you know some algebra, the integer is a so-called principal ideal domain. And uh, if you want to prove something is principal ideal domain, then you, you may use this fact. Okay, and the second is that, the uh, second idea is that you can generalize this, generalize this into the, let's call it, let's call it multivariable. So the idea is that uh, if, if GCD of A1, A2, up to A, and is equal to D, then you can find A is, D is just A1, X1. You can find A, the linear com integer linear combination of X1, X, and such that uh, uh, this is correct. Okay, and uh, you also, and the third is that it also works for the polynomial, uh, the integer. I think it works for the polynomial ring, right? If you have a polynomial ring uh, over a field, I think over integer may, may not be okay, but over a field should be okay. So if you have a, like the polynomial ring in coefficient c or r of x, then the, this theorem also works. So basically, if you have f and g, which they are, have no common prime factor, and then you can write a af plus bg equals to one. So this is also famous result that uh, people like to like to use. And if you are interested in the algebraic geometry, then you can generalize into the Hilbert. If you're interested, you can go to my other channel to see uh, this. So I mean, it's I. So I hope I maybe I never pronounce this correct. So Hilbert Nasta Anzas. Okay, so Hilbert Nasta Anzas is like a generalization of this kind of fact. Okay. So basically, if if f and g have no common prime factor, then there will be there will be no comma roots. So you can generalize this, and uh, this simple variable results can be generalized in the Hilbert uh, Nasta Ansatz. So you, so even though this simple identity can lead to the difficult mathematics. Okay, the the fourth I want to comment is that uh, this one can use this to prove the Chinese remainder theorem. Okay, so in our videos, maybe in other videos, I will prove uh, I will prove the famous results of the uh, Chinese remainder theorem by just using this identity. Okay, so uh, I think this is good for one video. So this video just talk about proof of this identity and hope you guys uh, like, uh, and I will see you guys in the next videos.